Hello and welcome to another episode of the Couch Coaches, where we talk about everything going on in sports. And we had an interesting uh, development last week. We were talking about the Raiders and Reverend Joel was like, I need to be on this because uh, you guys were talking too positively about, <laughs> about or Deacon Hill was talking too positively about the Raiders. So, so Reverend Joel, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hand it to you. You go ahead and talk about anything you want to talk about as far as uh, what you think the Raiders are doing this offseason. And then Deacon Hill, uh, you just take it from there. And then uh, Brother Bill and I will just sit back and enjoy two Raiders fans uh, arguing about their their crappy team. So, Reverend Joel, please well, take, take it away. Well, as a Raiders fan my entire life, okay, I'm a Raider fan in Indiana. Um, the Raiders absolutely have made me very unhappy for the longest length of time that I can remember. And I'm still unhappy. And none of these moves have made me happy. A lot of in New England connections, uh, starting with Jimmy G, I'm not liking none of that at all because I am a Raider who firmly etched in my memory is January 19th, 2002. And I will never forget the Tuck Rule or New England. And I don't want anybody that they've ever had. Period. So that starts with Jimmy G. Now, given that he's there, okay, he's here now. He has a whole lot to prove to me. He can't, uh, the rumors is he can't throw beyond 30 yards. Well, we know that's where Devontae makes a living. So if you can't throw beyond 30 yards, you're gonna, first of all, you're going to have to do that to win me over. He got to throw a 45, 50 yarder, to, a, a bomb, and, and Devontae catch it and it be on the money for me to come even close to, to co-signing for him. That's one. <clears throat> now, we've made some moves, okay? The, the Raiders have made some moves. Uh, we went and got Jacoby Myers, another New England receiver, okay? Now I'm not happy again. 800 yards the last two seasons, that says he can play. Let's see what he can do. I'm still not happy about him. Uh, we grabbed Marcus Epps, Robert Spillane, um, O.J. Howard, tight end. He's going to come in and somehow be as good as, uh, you know, who we lost. So, uh, you know, and then a few guys that we're grabbing who haven't done much. You know, Washington, uh, Cam Sims hasn't done so much. Jaquan Johnson, safety, hasn't done a lot for the Bills. So all these moves do not make me believe that we're not going to get whooped all season. You know, when I say whooped, I mean like whooped, like Molly Bob, like we've been getting probably even worse is what I believe. So uh, I think I mentioned before the show that I'm a jersey thrower. So whenever we're not doing good, by the by halftime, my jersey could easily be in the middle of the floor. So we'll see if I keep my jersey on this year. But I'm highly I'm highly doubtful, Deacon Greg. And you had a lot of nice things to say last week. And I was like, there is no way he could really be be saying that. But <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna I'm let that go because I I found out last week also that you are a Laker fan and so I think you're a little confused. But go ahead and and, and go ahead and uh... <laughs> see. I see the plot here. I see what they got going here. They want to turn this Ra Raiders against each other. See, I want that, That's what they that's, that that was the whole plan. But we ain't gonna go there. See, we ain't doing that. Ain't gonna work. But okay, let's Reverend let's Joe, stick with the Raiders, man. What do Reverend we got? Joe, look I see where you come but you got to first of all you got to realize you got a you got a New England coach so you're going to get you already bought in already we already we already got a New England coach so he's going to go with what's familiar with him and I I think everybody is is really coming down real hard on Jimmy G first of all like I said he ain't a great it ain't no great outstanding pick but who's out there Aaron Rodgers you want to go deal with that headache going back and forth there was nothing out there so he's a safe, he's a safe guy to come in. He's a stop guy. We're going to, I guarantee you, we draft a quarterback in this draft. So in all these free agents they're bringing in, these guys are just solid pros. They're not no, no superstars, you know, but it's just, all, we got to wait till after the draft, see what they do in, in doing the draft. I think they're just trying to fill in a couple of holes, get some depth on the chart and, and draft and, and go through the draft, build through the draft. But I think we're going to have a solid team. I really do. I, we can't be any worse than we were. And I, and Jimmy G, is way more accurate and his than than Carr, as far as his 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 intermediate ball and his short ball. 
He he releases the ball way faster, and the timing. And I I and I was having a conversation with my my next door neighbor is a big time Raider fan, and and we go out and we talk in the driveway all all, all Saturday. But uh, and he loves car. He's a, he loves car and everything like that. But I'm I'm telling him, car. His balls were too slow. His release was too slow. He 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 doesn't make anything happen in the pocket. Jimmy G does all of that. And far as far as down deep balls down the down the down the field, all that stuff is timing. You know, all any NFL quarterback can throw the ball fifty yards. Give me a break. Any of them could do that. It's just timing. So when him when him and and Adam get out there and go around run out there on the field, get their timing down, they'll get those routes together. Believe me, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Don't believe those two guys right there that's, that's trying to cause dissension in this in between us, my bro, my my Raider brother. Don't believe them. I, I can see Joe right now. He's all happy over there. And Bill, he just don't know what to do. I'm loving this. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm always optimistic uh, uh, going into the season because you have to be. But I'm also pessimistic at the same time. We'll see. Uh, you know, I... I the thing I'm concerned about is you get a player like Devontae and we disappoint him this year. And now he's, he's going to be salty and, and he's going to need the one out or he's going to do one of them injury things and he's not going to play, you know, even though he's got the four year contract. So I'm concerned about that, you know, that, that if we don't satisfy him in some kind of way, you're going to lose him. You know, I mean, I really don't think we have a problem with running game. Josh going to be fine. Um, you know, he's going to, he's going to get his, but, Without Devontae, man, come on. I mean, he's proven to be the best. He bought in us. with our rookie, what the, uh, what was his name, Stid- Stidham or whatever it is. He, he he won him over in two games. I guarantee you Jimmy G will win him over. I actually I, I actually was liking Stidham. Now, bear in mind, I'm not a car fan at all. I want a car gone. So let's just me first say that, that I'm not a, a, a car fan. He had his chances with me, and, you know, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not. I was happy he was gone. But I felt like we was trading the same thing for the same thing. But we'll see. Way more accurate. He's not going to fold. Car, car. He, he at least, and everybody said he gets hurt. I said at least he's trying. Car ain't going. I go. Car ain't been hurt. No, he ain't going to get hurt. You don't get hurt falling down and and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So you're never going to get hurt. Jimmy G is yeah. going to try to make something happen, and he's yeah. a way more accurate passer than Car is. So I think we're going to be all right. You know, like I said, he's not. We're not. It's not a big splash. They were even talking about, you know, the Raiders always went out and made a big splash, and a lot of other teams do. They make all these big signings. How those those guys don't they don't usually pan out? You know, you can go and get mm-hmm. a big name veteran if you want to spend a bunch yeah. of money, and we did that last year with Jones. What? How did that work out for us? You know, so give give yeah. the coach a try. That's what they were saying. That you know, everybody want to jump on this coach and everything. He went what six six and uh, what was his record this year? Six and twelve or something like that. Gruden mm-hmm. went with four and four. No, he went uh. Six and ten yeah. or something like that. Uh, he was Gruden a little went, better than we had yeah, a better season. Than Gruden. Gruden. Yeah, he did better yeah. than Gruden, but everybody want to jump did. on this guy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a chance. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna co-sign and ride with you on it. All right, I enjoyed that a lot. So I'm just gonna <laughs> let that, I'm just gonna let that sit because we, I, I, and I, I think I can speak for Brother Bill. Uh, we side more with the uh, Reverend Joel on this, on this discussion so far. Um, we we saw Jimmy G, and uh, yeah, good luck. So I uh, so I want to uh, let's go to a a, a different subject because that was so enjoyable. And uh, Schwarber just hit a home run, so we're down we're down one run now. Getting com- coming back. Um, Odell Beckham. I'm gonna start, uh, Brother Bill. Let's just say so he, people threw out twenty million. He wanted twenty million dollars a year. He came out and said, eh, "I don't want twenty which means he probably would love 20, but he'll probably try to get 15 or 12 or something. At, at let's say, above $10 million a year, would you want Odell Beckham on, I guess, our team? Coming off injury. Again. Again. The last time he even ran a play was in the 2021 season latter part. Super Bowl, Bowl, right? Super Mm -hmm. Bowl. Okay, so he's out all of last year. 10 million. Him as a receiver isn't going to make the Niners in their offense any better. It's not. Not the way the, the Niners are. Maybe other offenses, yes. Maybe. But not the 49ers. For the 49ers to get over the hump and 
get to and win a Super Bowl is they have to shore up. We have to shore up our offensive line so we can run consistently in the second half of big games. So unless he's going to put on some pads and get down there on that old line, <laughs> throw that fish back. I don't want his little butt down there. I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, he's tiny. Uh, Deacon Greg, you want him on your team? Uh, no, we have, we have a number one receiver. He's not a, he's not a number one receiver to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, those days are over for him and for that price. And he's still in his mind, he still thinks he's a number one receiver. So for that, for that much money, I, I would, we, we, uh, we couldn't use him, you know, and he wants to be a number one receiver. I don't know how he would be as a number two receiver, but so no, I, 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 I he would play for some team, but not for the Raiders. Not, you know, I wouldn't want him. So, so you'll see you'll see him get picked up. You think? Oh, somebody will. Yeah, even you know, for that price point. Not that, maybe not that price, but somebody will give him a chance. All right, Reverend Joel, what do you he, think? He's gonna have to lower his lower his pricing. Uh, I mean, I mean, you're coming off your second MC, your second ACL tear. You, you did it twice now, right? And so, to me, there's something with your. I don't want to call it his training necessarily, because I guess it could happen to anybody. But he's one of those speed guys that uses a lot of torque when he runs. And and who's to say that you can that you can continue to, to do that kind of style of play as you age? What is he, 28 now? You you're starting to age a little bit. So I mean, I, I just uh for half of that, you know, say five maybe, I, I take him, you know, because he's still a talent. You know, I think he's still a talent, but yes. I think he's an over overpriced talent. And and you just gotta be careful there. He is uh he's 30 also. 30, he's 30, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's yeah, that, that's a, with, those, with the explosive guys, I mean, in any sport, the ones that are super jerky, I mean, it's just, it's hard to stay healthy because you're, you, like you said, you're putting so much torque in your knees and on your ankles. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and man, I know he was on the cusp of getting a big fat contract after coming back and playing for the Rams. He was light, he was lighting it up for the Rams. Yep. And he almost has to do that all over again where he just goes to a team for less. Yep. Hopefully not Kansas City. And then, like, kind of does the does it all over. Shows he can be a team player, all that stuff. Shows he can he can fly in a plane without getting wasted and taking his pants off or whatever he did when he yes. was to New York. And uh, yeah, he just he yep. just has to reset and start over again and go to a winning team. I agree. I Take definitely. less money. Yeah, I definitely. Take less money and then try to you know have a good season. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Moving on to uh, basketball. Lakers and Warriors. <laughs> Reverend Joel. Thoughts on the Warriors uh playoff. Well, making the playoff chances. We finally got a we we finally got a road win for the first time since like what December or January, some in, some mm -hmm. insane number. We've won yep. we've won eight eight home games now on the on the road. Uh mm -hmm. Reverend Joel, thoughts on Warriors and Lakers and playoffs yeah. and what happens once we get in and all that stuff. Well, both of them. Uh, well, I think I think the Warriors have bigger issues than the Lakers. I'll go ahead and say that. That we need uh, we need defense and we need coaching. Two things that I don't think that we have together right now, which which exemplifies why we play so poorly on the road. The defense isn't locked down on the road. We went to L.A. and they ran up 130 points somewhat. And what's that telling you? That's telling you that our defense is just not where it should be. But I also see that there's not a lot of coaching. We ship Wiseman off, and now Wiseman is doing well in New York. So what does that tell me? It tells me that yes. where is he? Is he in New York? Is Detroit? Detroit, sure. Detroit, Detroit. He's in Detroit, but he's doing well in Detroit. So he's doing well in Detroit. That tells me that, and, and I heard Steve Kerr do a, a conference about how he didn't fit in the system and all that kind of stuff. But come on, we need rim protection. We need height to do it. I mean, Wiseman had the height. You put him in a role. But I just don't see the coaching. We don't have the bench. I see we got GP2, and I, and I like him. He's there for defense, but we haven't activated him yet. You know, I don't know how long the abdominal issue is going to still be a part of what he's doing. So I don't, I don't, I, I don't subscribe. I'm one of those uh, Warrior fans that don't subscribe to Steve Kerr as a coach. I do not. I think he's one-off talent and not coaching. Real coaching to me is someone like Popovich, who's got a whole team of young guys but when you play San Antonio, as young as they are, those guys are hard-nosed, balling. If you take a look at, at what he's done with just a bunch of new guys, that's coaching. 
I don't think any and even though Steve Kerr came from that mold of coaching, he doesn't do that. And I just don't see it. The substitutions, uh, we wait until the last minute to bring Curry in. We take out Poole when he's hot. There's so many things that he does wrong that has me over here just pulling my hair out a little bit that I got. Now, Lakers, I think the Lakers got a legitimate shot at, at the postseason, but Lakers are not doing nothing without LeBron. Let me just say that. A healthy LeBron, you brought in uh, the kid that you let go. Um, what's his name? Russell. You brought in Russell, <laughs> and uh, he's balling. I mean, he's matured. He's balling. They got a nice little bit of chemistry going. Um, there's a lot of people to beat. So when I say postseason, I, I didn't say I see I saw Brother Bill kind of grin a little bit. No, no, I didn't say how far they'd go. I say they might make it to the postseason, but I think they have a better chance at making it to the postseason uh, than we do, even though they're oh they're already out of it, right? Aren't they already out of it? They're still in. They're still in. They they're out today. So they just I mean in means they get to the ten seed. We'll see. I mean, like I said, the Warriors, game. right, right. Warriors might help them get in. Who knows? That's my take. All right, Deacon Greg. Yeah, I, I'm looking for as far as the Lakers. I'm looking for to get in the play in, you know, to get into the play in, and and in, in order to do that, they uh, they need LeBron. You know, they might make squeak into the play in without him, but without with, without him, they're not going anywhere anyway. They're not going to no, you know make LeBron. make the play in. They won't even win the play in. Um, you know, uh, they made a lot of uh, you know acquisitions. They brought in a, a lot of guys, and like I say, the chemistry is working for them. Anthony Davis is a big factor, you know, that guy, he, he, one day he's playing the next day he's not, you know, and at this time when LeBron is out, he can't afford to be out for a little nagging injury or whatever. He got to play, you know, so that's a big concern there. I don't, even if they make the playoffs, I don't, even with a healthy LeBron, I can't see them. They might win a first round series. If they made the playoffs, I don't see them going any, any deeper in that, you know, it just, just took, took them too long to get them themselves together and they still need a couple other pieces anyway. And on to you, the Warriors. I can't even believe Reverend Joe's a Warrior fan, but oh yeah, he should live down the street from him. So okay, <laughs> that's like me wondering where about you and the Lakers, man. I'm, I'm still wondering about that. I'm still wondering how is this possible? <laughs> Kobe, I, I get it. I live Kobe nowhere near him, so I have Kobe to be Shaq, a I get it. But uh, yeah, uh, the the Warriors. Um, Steve Kerr. I ain't gonna say that he can't coach because he's he, they done won too many games and too many championships with him as a coach. You know, he, I think he lost a great assistant when Mike Brown is doing an awesome job in Sacramento. I, I think he was underrated on that bench. So I think you guys are missing that factor also. And I just think it's, I think the age and stuff is catching up with the Warriors. Don't, don't, that, that your core guys are getting up there. You ain't going to, you know, that's why you can win sometime, you know, and, but they ain't going to pull off those heroics they, like they used to. And I think the one that's slipping, Draymond has slipped a lot. A lot of people don't want to say that he slipped a lot, but. You know, even in his defense, he slipped, and it's definitely, you know, he, you know, he's he slipped, and I think Clay has slipped a lot. Clay, you know, he used to be more reliable. Now he's very streaky. Some games you'll get something out of him, and then a lot of games you you won't. Uh, Cur uh, um, Curry, now he's still got it. Curry can still go, you know, but he ain't gonna take it all on his own. And uh, and and far as your boy Poole, I, I'm gonna get a new show. He's a new face of flopping in the NBA. <laughs> He, he he's, the, he's, the new, he's the new face of the flopping, so I don't know about him. But I and I will agree with you about Wiseman. They shouldn't have let him go. I was talking. I had that conversation with uh, with uh, with uh, Joe on Sunday, and he's like, "Well, he's just on a bad team. Somebody got to score." Right. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that. he had potential, and I wouldn't have let him go because you do. You guys, you guys don't have big men on that team. You need you need more than uh than um. What's the veteran big man you guys got? I can't even think of his name right now. Looney, yeah. Ron Looney. Yeah, Looney. Looney, Looney. Looney, yeah, he needs a little bit more help. That would, they could have they could have complimented each other, you know, with, in a, with a rotation going there. But uh, yeah, but yeah, the the Warriors are not going anywhere. They're coming home with. They'll be with the Lakers. <laughs> All right, brother, brother Bill, set them straight. Brothers, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> when I look at the when I look at the Lakers schedule and the Warriors schedule. Two things stand out at me. The LA Lakers have 10 games left. Nine of those 10 games are against playoff teams. They play the Phoenix Suns twice 
the Utah Jazz twice. They have to play OKC. They, they have to play the Bulls twice. The only team that they should be able to beat with or without LeBron are the Houston Rockets. All those other teams, if I'm those players, I'm licking my chop at the chance to send the, the LeBron James Lakers home fishing for the summertime. All those games, because it's the Lakers. I mean, to their credit, you know, the Lakers, right? We got a chance to send them home. That's number one. Number two, the last time I checked, the Golden State Warriors with Clay, Steph, and Draymond have not lost in the finals. Have not, when all of them have been healthy. So, and I said this before on the podcast, the barring injury, someone has to beat them in a series. And Draymond Green, Steph, Clay, they know how to win big games in the playoffs. It's proven. We've seen it. We saw it last year. I thought the Celtics were the better team in that series, but the Warriors outplayed them. They out-executed them, and they were the smarter team. That's why they won. Poole is the mystery to me because of how well he played last year, and this year I see him trying too hard. If he just plays his game and, and defends as well as he can, he's not a great defender, but just cut down on those senseless fouls and just play solid defense when – when uh, GP2 gets in the lineup, and especially when they get Wiggins back, Wiggins is – not coming me, back. When, they, when Wiggins comes back, then that's when, they'll, that's when they'll make their run. So if they can get out of that six seed and get to the five, I was hoping they get to the four seed. That way they could have the first round uh, home court advantage. Might, might not happen. Just get all your guys, get all your horses in the stable – and when you get to the to the next season, then you make your move. And you can sit at home and and send wish you were here cards to all the Lakers fans and the players. <laughs> Brother Bill, I quick question though. Do you do you do you agree or disagree that we don't look like we did last year? We look like a completely different team out there. Uh agreed. Um and I and I think the reason why we defensively why we're struggling is because the the players who we lost, um, we didn't talk much about um Otto Porter was a was a good defender off the bench. So we had defensive chemistry even with our bench when either Clay was say out there or Steph or even Wiggins. Our defense stayed solid. And and I agree. We we don't have that this year. Can we turn it on the postseason? We'll just have to find out. Um, because I you're right. if we don't, then it's going to be, yeah, we're going to get bounced because there's just too many good teams in the Sacramento. I never saw that coming. No way. Me they are falling. They are. So I agree with you on that. If, if, if we don't fix this defense, it, it, it's, it's, we're done early. Yeah. The first round. Yeah. I think so. The, the Lakers issue is it's, it's, it's LeBron. It's LeBron and then can 80 stay healthy. And can he not be a healthy scratch just because it's a back to back game? Um, that Lakers are pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, for the Warriors, and it's interesting. So Mike Brown is a great defensive coach. Sacramento's doing great. Their defense sucks. <laughs> it's like it's like he's doing great as a head coach, but it's like their defense is terrible, which is like his bread and butter. So it's crazy mm -hmm. watching him. And I love the whole light the beam thing. I think that's awesome. Um, but it's crazy watching this dude go up there and be successful and not be successful at the thing that he's known for it's 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 kind of crazy um i i'm hope i'm crossing my fingers and this is more because of the warriors history the last 10 years is that when they get into a series they'll be able to do better adjustments than they're doing in a single game but to solve all the issues and then we'll jump on to the to the last subject because we're running out of time i think the warriors i think draymond steph and clay need to get together go over to wiggins house move his <laughs> wife and the other guy's kids out of the house <laughs> And bring him back to the stadium and start playing. All right, let's go. All right, enough of this. Enough of it. Things should be easy now. He's got nothing to worry about. Just go play basketball. Man. Hey man, I said if the rumors were true, this is this is this is when you want to play. Yeah, he, can bring, he, can, he, can, he angry. He can lead us to the promised land. I play no. better angry. A angry defensive player. 
please get onto the court, man. And, oh God, the taunting, the taunting from the from the opposing team, man. Oh, just who's your daddy signs? And oh man, be, oh, he would play so well because he'd be so angry. So well, Perfect. exactly. Get him out there. I'll help. I'll help well, pack. I just love the the wishful thinking with the Warriors, boy. You guys are. I'm amused right now. All three of you guys. That's that's amusing. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hey, man, we see too much good stuff the last ten years. We get. We got to be hopeful. It's true. All right, uh, last subject, oh, and, and we have uh, seven minutes and 20 seconds before this just cuts off. Uh, Cam Newton says there's no way that there's 32, I think he used a bad word, 32 efforts better than me. Uh, does anybody think that there's a team that could use Cam Newton as the as the quarterback? Uh, Brother Bill, go first. Are there teams who have quarterbacks who aren't, on a talent basis, as good as Cam Newton, that's debatable. But it's more than just ability. It's chemistry with your team. It's leadership. It's being able to command offense. The, the year that the Panthers got to the Super Bowl, they didn't have an explosive offense, but they had chemistry, and they had a very good defense. And they were able to put them in situations where Cam could – throw the ball or run the ball. He could navigate the offense and lead the team. You, you don't have that leadership element with him right now. It's it's too much drum to me. I would, I, I would have to look at all the teams who have mediocre or worse quarterbacks and say, yeah, he could make that, he could make that team better. And at a glance, I just don't see that because I don't know what owner or GM wants to deal with that headache. Yeah. All right. I got to cut you off just because we got, we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, Deacon Greg. Yeah. I don't see it happening. Uh, he, he lost his job to to Jones, that quarterback over there in New England. And 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 I felt like you felt, uh, Bill, when he went to New England, I said, that's going to be a perfect uh, fit for him. He's going to be able to show his talents. He looked horrible over there. And I don't, and, and you're talking years ago when he was that running stud, he's not that anymore. So no, I don't, I don't even see him playing on any team. Oh, but he was on New England. So Reverend Joel, I'm going to let you take it here, but he, I mean, he could be a Raider now, right? No, no, his shoulders, uh, his shoulders shredded. We, we didn't, we didn't mention that. That shoulder's not, that shoulder hasn't been right and it's not right. He's done. I'll just leave it there. He's done. Yeah. Oh, and his man, his pro day, they were showing highlights from it. It did not look good. He's overthrowing <laughs> dudes. He's throwing a dude. They're like, Oh, Cam threw it 60 yards. It's like, yeah, but the guy had to stop to come, to come back to get the ball. Like it's, it doesn't, it, it, it didn't, it didn't, he didn't do himself any, any good other than, People are talking about Cam Newton for so he can promote whatever he's yoga. I don't know if he's still doing the yoga commercials or whatever. He can promote whatever fashion thing he's doing. Um, um, yeah. So I don't want to jump onto another topic because we literally have four minutes left. But Reverend Joel, thank you so much for uh, for joining us this week. And thank you, guys. Uh, Brother Bill and I just watched two Raiders fans go at it. I I can't tell you how much joy that brought me. We didn't really go at it. No, you, went so at it enough. you went at it enough to make. Me happy. Right. <laughs> so as we get as we get into the playoffs, um, and you want to jump back on, please come back on any any Tuesday. Uh, we're at the top of Appreciate the night. Right now. Love you what you're all doing, today. and thank you for the content for Emmanuel everywhere. People love it. Awesome. All right, you guys have a. Um, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>